Now then, now then. I am very aware that a lot of my videos have been about things you can do as a DM. Here's a fancy thing for setting up this module or that. Something I don't think I've really touched on is how when you've done all of these things, how do you actually get your players into Foundry? So I'm going to do a little two-part video here. The first part is going to be for you as a DM, um, how to actually assign a character to a player, how to get them in the game. Then I think I'm going to do another video, which you'll hopefully find useful for your players, which is not going to be for you as a DM. It's going to be not even in the Foundry program. I'm going to, I'm going to use a browser, the player we make in this session, of a character we make, and we're going to assign it to a player. The next video I'll then do as me opening a br from a browser, connecting to the campaign, logging in as a player, and showing a player the things we can click through. So my aim with that is that if you are a DM who has new players coming into Foundry, you can say, watch this video of this strange bearded British man, and he'll show you how the Foundry basics work. Because a lot, if you're here watching these videos, you're probably trying to learn Foundry for yourself, and then you trying to learn it as a DM whilst teaching players the player perspective of it can be a bit overwhelming for both of you, really. So I'm going to make a brand new, um, I should have gone to another Foundry world for this. This is my main campaign, but oh well. I'm going to make a new player. So I'm going to go create actor. I'm not going to do a full character build here because you've already seen that in another video. But I'm going to call him Test Terry. He's a player character. And I'm going to put him in my party folder. So Test Terry. I'm going to very quickly throw some features in here. Um, I don't even know. What class should Test Terry be? He can be a fighter. Level 1 fighter. That's got better. It didn't used to do that, and I didn't know that it now did it. Foundry is obviously updated to bring through some class abilities. It's my first time ever seeing this. I want to see now, if I go and edit his fighter level to a higher level, is it going to know and bring in the higher features? If it does, I'll be very happy. <gasps> well, you've seen that live. I didn't know that would do that anymore. I'm running a one-shot in a couple of weeks, and character creation has just become much more straightforward. Cool, okay. So Test Terry is a level um, seventh level fighter. Let me put a, find a picture for him. I don't know, what, what, what can we use? Um, characters is probably all Curse of Strahd, I think. Uh, who can we have? Yeah, here we go. The art I used for Izek who I see some people called Isaac, which probably makes more sense, but oh well, he's been called Isaac for two years in mine. Uh, I'm just going to give him an item, just give him a sword. Um, great sword, that'll do. So we've got a seventh level fighter who swings around a great sword. I'm not going to bother with the stats or anything like that. This is just a, a very straightforward thing. Now, the character exists in my campaign. What I then need to do is add, before I assign that player a character, the player has to exist in my Foundry world. So I'm going to go Configure Players. You can see the players I have in mine. Access key, which is basically a password you set for them. And I'm going to create an additional user called Test. I'm going to put a password in for it. And they are a player. Save and return. I don't think it goes straight back in. I don't know. I thought I'd have to log in as me again. I'm back in. And now test exists as a player in my game. If I go into my party and I find test Terry, I can go right click, configure permissions. Now by default, all players will have no permission to this sheet. But the individual users have the default, which we can see is none. For the new person named Test, they are the owner of that sheet. I'll click Save. Then, to get them in your game, remember, players join Foundry through a web browser, not the program. I would go to Settings, 
I'll click invitation link, which I'm not gonna do because it will bring up my IP. But when you click invitation link, it will show you two links, uh, two IPs, your internal and your external. Your players need the external one. The internal one can be very useful, especially when you're first starting to use this and you're first making maps. There's nothing stopping you from making a test player and having them open on a browser on the other screen or tabbed. So that as you're making something and making like a dungeon, you can just confirm for yourself, can my players, are there any breaks in my walls and windows that my players can see through? Um, can they see more than they should be able to? Do these attacks work? So I'm, I'm really big on using that. So we made a character, we assigned it to someone, we've created a user for them, we've sent them the invitation link, and now they're gonna join our session. Um, before I end the video, there's a couple of other things in here we didn't do, which I know I've covered in other videos, like you would want to go into a token, and you might want to set, what does Terry, you know, Terry, Tess Terry might be his full name, but he might keep it, you might wanna keep Terry secret. So you might want other players just to see his token on the battle map as Terry. Or if you have a party of characters with very long names, that can be quite disruptive on a battle map when all these, like, you know, Percy, Darola are moving around your maps. Shrink them down if you want. Um, do you want his name to be displayed all the time? Whenever anyone hovers over it, whenever anyone who owns it hovers over, load the different settings there. Um, choose a token to have assigned on the map. At the moment, if I were to drag Terry, he would just have the picture. There's no sort of portrait or token or pog, or maybe you want a top down. You'd set that through prototype token. Your player can't set this, you need to do it. Um, size, do you have any elevation? There's better ways of doing that. And then vision, vision's important. How far can this character see? Um, what angle can they see at? I see more people doing that. Why should your character technically have 360 degree vision? Do you want to just have it coned forward? I think that would lead to a bit more micro macro than I'd like in my game, but I can definitely see the appeal in doing it. Do they give any light out? I'm going to cover another pass on light in, in a future video. And do you want any attributes to display on their token? You might want them to have like their AC or their remain in health appearing as a bar. You'd have to set all that up yourself as a DM. Once that's done, I think I'll end the video here and I'm going to release at the same time as this, I'm going to record it just now, um, a video of Terry logging in. I have to check what my bookmarks are on the bookmark bar at first. Um, Terry logging in and a player overview of Foundry. So I hope you find that useful. Look for the other one that's for your players and I'll speak to you in a minute.